sitting down here with Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. Mm -hmm. Shannon, you've been through this before. How did TD do up there? He did well. I thought he would be a, a lot more emotional. Um, I talked to him right before he was to go on stage, and, and I asked him, you know, how was he feeling? He's like, you know, I'm anxious. I'm a little nervous. Uh, I said, you're probably going to cry. And he said, yeah, um, no, probably not, but maybe when I start to talk about my father, because I, I, I realize in, um, how special his father was to him, and although his father's not here, a lot of the values that TD uh, was instilled with and a lot of the reason why he was on that stage tonight was because of his father. This was an opportunity to have the world hear about his dad and how TD became TD and how he became a Hall of Famer. So I thought he would be a, uh, be a lot more emotional, especially in that little block of time in which he was going to talk about his father. Yeah, he was saying that he always wanted to make his dad proud right. and then he always gave it everything he had. Did you know that about him when he was just in the locker room? You knew this guy's giving it all, his all. Well, no, he was just always a hard worker. And he really do a whole lot of talking about his family. I knew his family was very close. He was very close to his family. His family. And uh, his mom was like every game. His brothers would come to a lot of games. But he didn't really do a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of talking um, about his dad. You know, and it was, you know, his dad died at a very young age. And so I thought that was something that was very traumatic. And that's something that, you know, someone goes through something like that. That's not something you, you, you bring up often. So if he wanted to talk, you know, obviously we were there to listen. But he was about his business. He just came to came to work every day, got better every day, and uh, we were very. I was very fortunate to play with him for the amount of time that I did, and it was we were able to kept, capture two Super Bowls. What was TD like in the locker room? <laughs> he was quiet. Um, he 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 didn't say a whole lot. I mean, you know, he, he had his guys, the, the running backs. They're a very close knit group, but uh, he everybody liked when uh, myself and uh, Keith Byrne was whole court. So uh, they, they did more laughing and, and, and stuff like that than he did talking, but he was the ultimate professional. He was the ultimate guy, the teammate. You knew, you didn't, you know, hey, I do my job. I already know TD's gonna do his job. John's gonna do his job. Everybody's prepared. That's the way Mike had it. You know, we had fun. Mike let us be ourselves. He let, yeah, he do you. Um, but when we come on that practice, when we come on the practice field, I need you guys to work. When you're in the meeting room, I need you to, you know, focus, study hard. We're going to have fun. Um, but fun comes along with winning. There's no fun in losing. So um, I, I think those, uh, that 96 through 98 was as good a time as I've ever had in, in any point juncture in my life, especially when it involves um, sports. Uh, this was great. We're a very close-knit team. Uh, we still stay in contact with a lot of guys because we realized what we accomplished was so special. There, there are very few teams that's been able to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls, and that puts you in a very elite company. And now with Zim and John and myself, uh, TD in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I expect to make this trip again next year with Mr. Bolin and, and maybe make it a few more times because I believe Steve Atwater will rightfully gain acceptance into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So that's great to see that all of our hard work and we weren't just John Elway or we weren't just this or that. We had a lot of guys that contribute and they're being rewarded for their hard work. You mentioned Mr. B there, Steve Atwater. You feel like it's about time that the, those Broncos teams are yeah, getting some respect. Yeah, I mean, the Broncos, uh, 19 from, what, 1960? When it came into existence, 60. Yep, 60. 60. So, and, and we had to wait 44 years to get the first guy. And so maybe, the floodgates are opening and now we go 44 years and maybe in the span of 10, 15 years, we're going to have five, six, seven guys. And the, the thing that I like most about Mr. B, and I've only played for two owners and both of these guys were kind of the same way. They felt that if the players and the coaches did the heavy lifting, they should get the credit. Uh, Mr. B did not want to be in the limelight. He was not about having radio shows or TV shows. He was perfectly fine to let his coaches and players get all the light, glory and he would gladly accept the trophy from uh, Commissioner Tagliabue at the time, and so uh, it was great to play for him. Um, I have a different, little, different relationship than a lot of the guys that played with him because um, I was one of the guys that I was the first guy that he actually drafted that went to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But very early on, he took a very strong liking to me, and uh, I don't know why. I don't know what he saw in me, but he he always liked me. I guess because I I kept the locker room loose and. I, but he knew I came to work every day and football was the most important thing to me. And so I have a very unique relationship with Mr. B. And I, I'm really looking forward to, to coming back next year and, and, and having his family there and, um, and seeing them and 
him be a part of the class of 2018. Do you have a good Mr. B story you can share, just something with? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, every Thursday he used to come down there and ask Greek, you know, about the injuries and what was going on. And so I went up into his office one day and I stole his glasses. And you know, Mr. B used to, he was a workout and he had these socks pulled up here and he had these shorts that was way up here and he had a cut off shirt. So I got his glasses off his desk and I cut me a pair of shorts and I had me some long socks pulled up. And so when he came in Greek's office, I was sitting in his chair where he normally sits and my feet were up on the desk and he just looked at me and he couldn't do anything but laugh. And uh, it, 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 it was so funny and I was, no one else would have ever thought to do with that uh, uh, to make fun of Mr. B, but I, I think that was my personality. No one was, was really off limits to me. Not Mr. B, not Mike, not John Elway. And I think that's that kind of uh, why I ingratiated myself with them because I was a fun-loving guy, but they knew I worked hard and it, uh, it lightened the mood a lot of times uh, uh, with the team. And so it was great. Um, I just, I wish that he could have received this honor before the ravages of this not nasty, terrible disease has taken its hold on him. But like I said, although he probably will not understand what's going on, his family would be more than gracious and they definitely know what was going on. So I look forward to coming back next year. I'm gonna talk this, I'm gonna speak this into existence. Um, I do believe that Mr. Bowling will go in in 2018 and I wouldn't be surprised if he and Steve going together because I, there's no question in my mind that Steve Atwater deserved to be in here also. So I think I'm going to be busy over the next couple of years coming back to Canton and see my teammates and my former owner and in going into Canton. You got a stump for those guys. I am. Hey, well, we're celebrating TD tonight. We'll be back yeah. next year. I hope so.